Well, right now in Austin, South by Southwest is going on. Biggest music festival in Texas. One of the biggest in the world where hundreds, thousands of people come in. And, and if you count just the, the not only the performers, but the people there just to watch music and record executives and film critics and all that. 300,000 people are going to be filtering through your state capital this week. It ends this weekend. However, the load has lightened this year as more than 60 bands canceled their plans to go to South by Southwest because it was sponsored by this, that evil, horrible hate group, the United States Army. Oh, my God, not the Army. Why do they hate the Army so much? Well, because the Army is one of the primary drivers behind the genocide in Gaza. That's their official position. My next guest is going to make some sense of it for you. Evan, say it, coming back to the James Show. And Evan... Things like this used to drive me insane because how can they how can they see what's going on between Israel and Gaza and be like, hmm, Israel's the bad guys? Uh, because c- clearly when you interrupt a music festival and you get all rapey and kidnappy, that's worse. Are you, are you with me? Did I pull you up? Okay. I am. I, yeah, that just, that just didn't sound like a question. I thought that was a statement. Well, um, l- listen, the, I, I turn it over to you because I read your book about 10 years ago or whenever it came out, Kindergarten of Eden, and you explain and rationalize why these people side with evil over good and not just get it wrong. It's not like they're indifferent, like, well, you know, there's good and bad on both sides of this argument. They're siding with Gaza over Israel and that used to drive me nuts. It doesn't drive me nuts anymore. Now that I've I've digested the your unified field theory of liberal liberalism, I kind of expect it. Oh, in, indeed, it's it's utterly predictable. And as as you quickly pointed out, because I was going to make the point that dislike, in fact, hatred for America is it, not a standalone position on the political left. It, it's hating the army is just an extension of defunding the police. It is not a coincidence that it's a position held by the same people who side with the Palestinians, who want zero bail for criminals, who want open borders to allow drug traffickers in. I mean, in in that original book, in the book, The Kindergarten of Eden, How the Modern Liberal Thinks, I, I make the case of the modern liberal, and now we call them the woke, is not only always wrong, they are always as wrong as wrong can be. And... When I gave that speech, people started to call it what you just called it, the unified field theory of of liberalism or of leftism. And when I wrote the book, I actually laid out four laws and three corollaries. And one of the corollaries is that all leftist policies occur in tandem, that every effort on on behalf of the evil, failed, and wrong is met with an equal and opposite effort. On, on, uh, in order to denigrate that which is good, right, and successful. See, the, the basic premise behind modern leftism, behind wokeism, is that nothing is better than anything else. No culture, no religion, no form of governance, no behavior, no familial construct. Nothing is allowed to be recognized as better than anything else. And since nothing is better, I mean, one of the more obvious ones is today fat being in shape is not better than being fat. Right? And, and so if nothing is better than anything else, then success is unjust. Why should a person, a culture, a religion, why should people who behave in a, a, in a particular way, why should something succeed if it's not better than anything else? Yeah, and why, yeah, well, your, your perfect metaphor that you used in the book for this was uh, just think if you took this same sort of application into where we all agree that merit exists and that you used a, a sporting event, you used a football game. And so, you know, if you want to know why uh, the neutral guy or how the neutral guy would observe Tom Brady's 20 year streak of going to 10 Super Bowls and winning seven of them, and while all these other teams like the Cleveland Browns were just mired in misery for the last two decades. Well, the neutral guy cannot say, he's not allowed to think that, well, maybe Tom Brady's better. Maybe they're running a better office. Maybe Bill Belichick's a better coach. No, that must, if you say that, then you're probably a white supremacist or bigoted somehow. So the Patriots must have cheated and the Browns must have been cheated. And so when you see success and failure, that, that is a sign that they're, these are the cheaters and these are the people who have been cheated. And so that makes, that elevates the Gaza, not from some rapey, murderistic terrorist place, but the one of the biggest victims on the planet. 
In, in, indeed, if everybody is equally good and equally nice and equally uh, decent and equally, then the only reason that they could have raped and, and murdered is because something must have forced them to do that. So the, the evil is, is, is the provoked. The evil is the innocently provoked, and the greater the evil, the greater the provocation must have been. And then it becomes the jobs of the intellect and the intellectuals and those who, who, who are propagandists to cherry pick, spin, manipulate, invent out of whole cloth whatever arguments they need in order to show how the Palestinians, these lovely, lovely, lovely people, how they were not only provoked, but they were provoked to do such horrible things, which is why the political left always has to speak in, in such hyperbolic terms. You know, it's not just that the Israelis are wrong. They're committing genocide because anything less than genocide wouldn't have justified the, the evils and the horror that the Palestinians visited upon the Jews. It was the same thing post 9-11 when the political left had to justify the, the, the terrorist attacks. And since those were the most horrific attacks, they had to say things like, uh, it, it, like, like the professor in Colorado, Ward Churchill said, every American is a little Adolf Eichmann. The, I, I forget the exact terminology. Yeah, he's but, little Eichmanns. But, yeah, in, in front of his professor, in front of his class. Evil, yep, the e, and then... And then after he said that, rather than the political left condemning him, he actually became a hero of the left. He got invited to speak at more college campuses than he ever had before for more money than ever before because his vile hatred for America made him a hero to the political left. And, of course, the, these bands that are, that are dropping out because of their hatred for America, they, they are convinced. You know, as I said earlier, if success is unjust, then great success is a great injustice, and exceptional success is an exceptional injustice. And so they hate America not because we're bad. They don't make judgments about good and bad. Good and bad doesn't exist on the political left. They hate America because we are the most, we are exceptionally successful. Therefore, we must be exceptionally evil. They hate Israel because the Jews are exceptionally successful. Look at, you know, how many Nobel Prize winning scientists. Look how many uh, world class orchestras. Look how many things are created by, by just a handful of Jews in the entire world. And look at how little, absolutely nothing is created by those in the Muslim world. Well, if there's no difference between the cultures, if there's no objective qualitative difference between Judaism and Islam, then the only explanation for the Jews' success must be that, they, that they've cheated. And the only explanation for the failure of the Muslims is that somehow they've been oppressed. I mean, it's everything. It's not just why they would choose the, the people who did the kidnaps and rapes. Uh, at the Israeli music festival, the Gaza people, they'll side with Gaza over Israel in that conflict. It literally goes out to so many of these other issues where you scratch your head and say, why on earth do they think like that? Well, once you digest Evan's work, then you can go to the next step and already understand when, when an issue comes up, you're not floored by, what do you mean men can have babies? Why would someone say something so ridiculous? I already expected it. Evan probably already expected it, too. Uh, and, and you can go ahead and move on to the next step. Yes, of course, of course you think men can have babies. But through the unified field theory of liberalism, it's not what he calls it. It's what everyone else calls it. How do, how do you explain, Evan, why people think men can have babies? Or they at least say it out loud. When they know in their heart of hearts men can't have babies, why do they say something so crazy? Yeah, the, the, the key to understanding the political left is that they believe in nothing. Nothing is right, nothing is wrong, nothing is true, nothing is a lie, nothing is beautiful, nothing is ugly. You know, I, I go back to their, 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 their putting a or obese woman on the cover of Sports Illustrated to show that, that fitness has no definition. There's an art uh, gallery in New York called the Guggenheim, very famous museum, the Guggenheim. They actually have a banana taped to the wall as one of their exhibits to show that there are no rules, there are no laws, there are no constants to beauty, to art. Uh, the, the, the key to understanding the political left is that they have wholly eliminated the concept of discriminating thought 
because they conflate discriminating thought with the evils of having discriminated. You know, it's, it's, it's one of a very, very, very few words, discrimination, that its two definitions are diametrically opposed and mutually exclusive. One definition of discrimination is the ability to use your, your, uh, your intellect and your experience to discern small differences between seemingly similar things, as in she's a discriminating shopper. The other definition is the inability to use your intellect and, and, and experience to see even the, the biggest of differences between things, such as all black people look alike. And so in order to eliminate the evils of discrimination, the political left has eliminated discriminating thought. In order, in order to eliminate the discrimination, as I said it in that original speech, in order to eliminate discrimination, the political left has opted to become utterly indiscriminate. So they don't discriminate between the teachings and preachings and practices of Islam and the teachings and preachings and practices of Judaism or Christianity. They must be seen as all equal, and therefore all outcomes should be equal. And when all outcomes aren't equal, then they are convinced that some nefarious uh, cause is behind it. So the political left doesn't believe in anything. So to them, there is no difference between a man and a woman. There is no difference between the United States and, and the Soviet Union or Russia. There is no difference between anything. That is their starting and their end point. Thus, they don't need fact or reason because their answers are all preordained. Their answers are all nothing. Nothing is real. Nothing is fake. You know, they don't even talk about the truth anymore. They talk about their truth. And, yeah, and, everything's subjective. Yeah. And so, of course, gender's just a social construct. How do you dare you claim men can't have babies? That's just part of your pre existing bigotries, your pre existing. And it, this works for everything. It even works in economics. Like, like, like you said, you know, they can't uh, admit that the USSR and uh, USA systems of government are any better or worse than the other. So while we're all prosperous and happy and they're all poor and committing suicide at greater rates, it must be because we cheated and they're victims of our cheating i mean it even works all the way down to electric cars like the the, the reason electric car electric cars are just as good as gas cars the only reason that they're, they're not as popular is because of what big oil propaganda big and we're all just hip, yeah we're all hypnotized yep. yeah in, in, indeed and there is no fact or reason on the side of the political left which by the way is is, is you will notice is why it is they can only tell you how evil everybody else is, but they can never argue for what it is they believe in the affirmative. I, Democratic I, Party politics are all, you're a racist, you're a bigot, you're a homophobe, you're a xenophobe, you're a colonialist, you're the... You're, but when it comes time to then explain how their policies work and what it is they embrace and why, they can't and they don't and they can't and they don't for the simple reason that having come to their beliefs without benefit of fact or reason, when it comes time to argue on behalf of their beliefs, they don't have fact or reason with which to do it. Good stuff. All right, Evan, say it. Follow him. Uh, he has a website, evansayit.com. But look, go to YouTube. Go to wherever you're already looking up videos. Look up Evan Say It's videos and watch a couple of his speeches. You'll end up buying his books. Thank you, Evan. Okay, James. Talk soon.